Welcome back. I'm Derek Dennis, ABC News here at the Barrel Elite's Alternative Investments Conference in New York City. And I'm joined by Rich Brown, who's been a sort of an, an alternative data specialist over the past 15 years, you know, creating products and then managing large teams that buy these alternative data products. Uh, uh, talk about just first of all, alternative data as a whole and how it's so important in the investment realm. Sure. Um, so my career began in alternative data back in 2006 when I worked for Reuters. And we were launching a product line called Machine Readable News. So it's basically how you take the textual data and then be able to systematically trade on it with computers without a human ever having to read it. Um, so back in the early days of alternative data, there were no real major studies on how to do it. There was no machine learning and AI in any, in any practical way. Um, so it made it much harder for us to be able to understand these investment strategies but as time has gone on, it, it went on from news and into social media, and you've got geolocation, you've got credit card data, and lots of other alternative data sets that you need to be able to exploit because they'll tell you something about your portfolio, what you may be missing right. in a stock analysis or what you may be able to exploit across hundreds or even thousands of stocks. So looking at the data recently, where are you steering your, your clients towards? Yeah, so it, it really depends on the sector that they have a focus on. So okay. if, if you're in the agricultural and commodity space, you might be looking at satellite data with um, you know, an understanding of their sensors and what it means to crop yields. Uh, if you're looking at anything in the consumer space or macroeconomic, you want to look at consumer spending. So credit card data, uh, geolocation data to know where they're, where they're traveling to. Uh, and that, you know, because it's so linked to the GDP, uh, those data sets are very fruitful and, and they've generally been around longer and can come in a very structured format, so it's easier to digest. You know, in a volatile financial climate that we're in now, uh, is your data sheet just off, off the charts? Is it too much to, to really wrap your, your arms around? Uh, not really. So in, in past places, you know, we've analyzed uh, hundreds and hundreds of alternative data sources, thousands of data sources total. Yeah. Uh, but what's interesting is over the last 15 years, as the advent of technology has come along, you know, compute power and and, uh, and storage is much, much cheaper. You can kind of keep a lot of it to have that historical data you need to, to test in the long run. And then if you start to look at sort of the advances in machine learning and artificial intelligence, that's where you can really take the scale of what these data sets offer, which might be, you know, a couple of megabytes to petabytes of data. How do you analyze that with a human behind it programming some of these machines? Uh, and there's really great potential with uh, with AI not just in quantitative measures, but also in like the human intelligence amplification. Yep. How do you make the human more uh, productive, bring all the data that they need in order to, uh, to make an investment decision? And you can cut out a lot of the middlemen uh, that, are, that are going along and massaging that data and having the, having the computers do that for you. But still, AI is relatively new. I mean, people are still sort of trying to figure it out. Uh, is it tough to sell that to an investor? Or, or to a company that's looking at alternative data to make decisions on, on where they spend their money? Yeah, I don't think it's, it's tough to sell them on the idea. I mean, generally people are buying in on the idea. What's the important part though is when you pick a project, uh, have a narrow enough focus. If you started to use ChatGPT, for example, and explore everything that was trained on in the internet, you're gonna get a lot of inaccurate information, less timely information. But if you were to bring the data and the models in-house, and you can focus it specifically on financial services information. So you include like financial news, the 10Ks and the Qs that the investors would, uh, would read, uh, investment research from the banks. So you put all that stuff that's highly relevant to your particular domain, then you can get a lot more information in there that's relevant to what you're, uh, what you're looking to accomplish. How do you secure the data? I mean, a lot of people are looking at, you know, security lapses that we've seen and, and hacking attempts. Uh, is that something that you, you have to safeguard against? Uh, you do. I mean, those are going to be general uh, standard security procedures. I, I think one of the ones that make more headlines are when you deal with personally identifiable information. So what is, what is your bank account number? What's your social security number? Uh, generally speaking, in the investment world, we don't care about that. I don't care what your social security number is. I, in fact, don't want it because there's way too much uh, risk in having that data in-house. So what you try to do is anonymize the, uh, the users and just know that you know, X percent of the people are shopping at Target versus Walmart and what your trends are over time. You don't need that, that personally identifiable information, at least in, in all of these use cases for financial services. Are you seeing trends in your data in a particular sector? Is the 
the investment pool moving in one direction versus another? Uh, so, so I'm not looking at it in a live environment right, right now, uh, but you will see a lot of uh, context clues in it. Uh, so again, going back to the consumer data aggregation, you can start to see what, what they're spending on, which stores or which sectors they're spending on, how much would be luxury goods versus consumer staples, for example. Um, so if you start to look at that, you understand where the money is flowing. And then you can you know, combine them with other information, looking at consumer debt ratios and are they spending money they don't have or are they actually now being able to deploy that higher wage that they may be receiving at their company? Yeah, it would seem big box retailers have always done traditionally well and then that seems like something that would continue. Yeah, I don't see that going away. I mean, you, you are going to see some of the more price savvy consumers, you know, shopping at the big box. They want better deals and, mm -hmm. and you know, what they spend their money on otherwise is, is going to be found out in some of these data sets. You know, we're heading into the holiday season now. Is this a particular time of the year where, you know, alternative data, you know, gives a picture of what, what's coming or what we'll see in, for this season? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you start to look at Black Friday, the, the, sh the shopping day that's uh, the peak right after Thanksgiving, right. you know, a lot of that spending is going to uh, foretell what's going to happen over the rest of the, of the holiday season. So uh, everybody's really focused on what the sales numbers are on those days. And the easiest way to get it is to look at the credit card data coming from, uh, from the sources there. Um, so if you start to really focus on that, um, and, you know, if, you, if you're just starting into alternative data, you got to be careful because you were very close to the holiday season now. You don't want to misinterpret the data. You want to have experienced people going in and helping you analyze it. Uh, so there may be more of like an aggregation focus that you look at rather than trying to get very deep into the raw data on, uh, on some of this stuff. A lot of people see a tough economy, which is what we're in now, as being an opportunity. Uh, you know, alternative data, you're sort of on the on a different side of that, right? You're not necessarily looking for opportunities, but you're looking at where the the I guess the crowd is going, right? In terms of uh, data pops and and you know really you know areas where you see a fine you know, rise in 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 the data, right? You're looking at that. Uh, yes and no. So you're not in some cases you are crowd following, right? You right. want to see where the crowd is going. Otherwise, in, in a lot of these data sets, they're meant to predict where the crowd will go. So because you're on the leading edge of what people are looking at with this alternative data, uh, you're going to get a, a glimpse into where people might go in the future uh, before the data that is traditionally reported in the quarterly earnings reports with the companies. If you can get a jump on that, obviously, you want to play your investments out uh, you know, over a longer term, uh, be able to get in and out of those positions appropriately. And part of what you do is you buy products, right, that sort of uh, you know, harness the data and, and look at it, right? Yeah, so, so directly I'm, I'm more responsible for the data acquisitions uh, okay. themselves, but to do that and exploit it, you need the databases and you need a lot of the technology, the tools, and even hiring the right people to be able to do that. So it's not just about the, uh, the cost of the alternative data. If you have to look at the entire total cost of ownership in this space and, and making sure you have the right people, the processes, and the technology in place to exploit that. Okay. Anything else you want to add or say? Um, so I think th so the, the different audience components here, right? So yeah. like I buy the data, I don't analyze it right. uh, other than analyzing the data about the data. <laughs> so as you guys start to figure out like what the chopping block stuff yeah, here yeah, looks yeah. like, it's less about me saying what, what's going to happen, right. which is what these allocators are doing. Yeah. And mine's more about like, okay, how do you give more data to those allocators? Yeah. Uh, so they're they looking, then constantly say, looking for data. Yeah. And like maybe the real estate market's played out right now, or, you know, maybe it's time to get out of the public markets and into the private markets. Not what we're hearing today, by the way, in the panels, but, uh, but the data in a lot of cases can also help support those conclusions or maybe just even help you understand the risk that you have in certain investments. So you're not blindsided by something else. If the, if the market is thinking one thing, and you've got a consensus estimate, but your data says something else because you're leading edge and, and the market hasn't caught up to it yet. Like those are some of the real ways that you can take, you know, at the single stock level, at the at the commodities and energy kind of instrument level, or even at the macro level to, uh, to get some better insight into the data. Well, you know, there's a saying that we hear often that the numbers don't lie, you know? <laughs> is, that, is that true? Is that a uh, misnomer? The numbers don't lie, but they can be very misleading if, if put in the wrong hands in the wrong context. Um, so, you know, it is new information. Uh, a lot of people now are, have a lot more experience dealing with that kind of information versus like 2006 when we sort of began in the, uh, in the natural language processing news space. Um, so I do think, you know, with more experience and more ways to look at data, better tools to do it, and sort of the compute power that you can have, just throw the, throw the uh, Amazon Web Services or Google Cloud at it and, uh, and just pay your bill later. Uh, those kinds of things can get you to the answer a lot more quickly. 
which, which also means alpha decay, so the data set is not going to be as valuable for as long. Um, you know, problems of luxury once you start to really, you know, get the data, exploit it, and generate some alpha. Great. All right, Rich Brown, uh, alternative data expert is what I'll call you. Thanks for joining me Thank here. Thank you. All right, I'm Derek Dennis here with Barrow Elite's Alternative Investments Conference. We'll have more later.